Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So a while back, I posted a poll in my Instagram story asking you guys if you wanted to learn 25 facts about me while I got ready and did my makeup or just sitting down talking to you. And it was only by like two or three votes, but majority wins, you guys wanted me to sit down and talk. So here I am and I'm ready to share a little information about myself, let you guys get to know me a little better. So if you want to learn 25 facts about me, stay tuned and keep on watching. All right, so I actually wrote these down because at first I couldn't even come up with 25 things and I was like, nah, that's dumb nobody cares and then i'm just like you know what this is supposed to be fun don't stress yourself out so here's my list in my chicken scratch um <laughs> i'll start with number one and i'm probably gonna pronounce this wrong but whatever i'll explain what it means i have misophonia misophonia however you pronounce it but it is the hatred of eating or chewing or smacking noises y'all do not understand like it literally makes me want to grind my teeth sometimes even just hearing myself chew stuff that's hard like i can't do it for a long time so i don't eat a lot of crunchy foods i don't chew on ice i can't stand hearing other people chew chips especially if they chew with their mouth open number one where's your manners number two it just it's like chalk like nails on a chalkboard i can't Number two, I am slightly OCD, but my OCD is literally, it's not about everything. There's certain things that I'm particular about and it's mainly because I can't stand to lose stuff. So I'm very organized with things that are important to me or things that are hard to keep up with. So for instance, my makeup collection is organized in a very particular way so I can pretty much tell you if I have something or not. I have over 80 eyeshadow palettes and I could probably tell you if you ask me if I have something, if I have it or not. I think that's pretty much it. Stuff in my office the same way and now the way my closet is set up, I'm gonna keep it this way but I just love things being organized. I love things being neat. Now don't get me wrong, if I'm in a rush or I'm just tired or like feeling overwhelmed. Sometimes I get in moods and I just don't feel like doing anything. I'll let a few things pile up here and there, but overall with most of the stuff, pretty much almost everything that I buy, I know if I have it or if I don't because I know where it's supposed to be. Number three. Now people who know me well know this, but you would never guess it by looking at me or telling how I interact with others. I am very shy. Starting this YouTube channel was so hard for me because I was just like, why would I do this to myself? Who cares to watch it? And am I going to be real and transparent enough to actually be honest and be myself for people to want to watch. I didn't want to come on here with some fake personality and trying to be all like, hey guys, Bowley, man, this is me. Oh my God, like, th no, that's not me. And there's some days I have trouble filming because I'm just like, I feel like I'm supposed to do this, but I kind of don't want to. So I don't like large crowds. I don't like speaking in front of a lot of people. This is a little easier because I'm talking to my camera. Like I'm talking to y'all when you watch it, but there's not people sitting here watching me. When I have to like film stuff and people are watching me film it, I get nervous. My face gets red. If I have to get on a microphone and actually announce stuff, my voice starts quivering like I'm about to cry hot ass mess it's just bad um just kind of like let me stay in the back but if things aren't moving i'll come to the front and get it done i'm an aries so that's where the dominance comes from but overall i don't want to be noticed i don't want to be the one person in the room that has all eyes on her never been my thing number four i am the oldest of four siblings i have a little sister and two little brothers my sister is three years younger than me, and then my brothers are five and six years younger than me. So my youngest brother, 
I used to treat him like he was actually my baby. Me and my brother Derek, um, he's the second to youngest. He just recently came out here and spent a weekend with me. We danced, cut up, and had a blast. And then if you've seen on my Instagram, the little babies, the four boys, or three babies and a big boy that I'm always posting, those are my nephews, my hearts, those are my sister's kids. Number five, I was born in Berkeley, California. I am a Cali girl. That is why my favorite football team is the San Francisco 49ers. I don't want to hear it. Don't be negative in my comments. And I don't want to talk about the Super Bowl, so hush. I grew up watching football with my dad. I grew up watching boxing with my dad. But we were always like on opposite teams. Like he liked the Oakland Raiders. I liked the 49ers. We used to watch wrestling together. Like there were always things that I tried to do to get close to my dad. I've always been a daddy's girl. Unfortunately, he did pass away this year. So my mom passed away five years ago and now my dad this year. So it's been a bit of a challenge, um, you know, just realizing I'm 38 and I don't have either of my parents or grandparents here. But I think where I am in life right now with my friends and the family that I do have close to me, I'm still in pretty good hands. I miss them, but for the most part, I think I'm okay. <laughs> Number six, I already mentioned this earlier about me and my dad used to watch wrestling together, but guys, when I say hardcore fan, like couldn't get me to miss an episode. And then on top of that, if one of my favorite wrestlers got hurt, I would cry. Like boo hoo, tears running down my face cry <laughs> i hate to even admit this out loud but ravishing rick rude was one of my favorites i don't know what it was about that man because i look at him now and i'm just like really barbara i don't know i just i he was my one of my favorite wrestlers hulk hogan all-time favorite but ravishing rick rude was in my top five and it never failed if you watched wrestling back in the day you know that he got Kicked in the balls every single match. Every match, somebody kicked that dude <laughs> between his legs. And it would make me so mad and I would cry because I would think he was going to lose and be like, why do they want to hurt him that way? Mama, that's not fair. Daddy, why does that hurt y'all so bad? <laughs> that was a whole nother conversation. But yeah, Ultimate Warrior, Hulk Hogan, Shawn Michaels, Bret the Hitman Hart. I was a fan. Number seven um, kind of goes along with number three, actually. I have body dysmorphia. I've been to therapy. This is how I know what it is. But body dysmorphia is where you don't see yourself for how you actually are. And a lot of times when you have this disorder, it morphs into other disorders. So... For me, when I look in the mirror, rarely ever do I look at myself and think that I am in good shape or that I have a nice body. I don't look at myself that way. I always think I need to be smaller. I need to be leaner. I, and it, it's not about the number on the scale because there are times where I've been smaller and I don't think it looks good on me but at the same time, there are certain parts of my body that I still don't like and I wanna change, so I try to get smaller. I have battled with anorexia. I have battled with bulimia. Before I started powerlifting, I drank every single weekend. Not like, let's go have a drink, like get drunk, probably hang over, throw up the next morning every single weekend. And not just one day. This was Friday night and Saturday night and go out drinking on Sundays. And then it evolved to, oh, let's find Thirsty Thursday. Now this is late 20s. This isn't early 20s, I'm still a kid, you know, experiment. And this was, Barbara, you know better and you know what this is doing to your body, but I didn't care. And so I would drink and then the next day I would feel like crap, so I would eat like crap, but then I knew I had to go to the gym on Monday and I didn't want to be bloated. So I'd spend the whole day either on the elliptical or not eating or eating and making myself throw up. 
this is why I say powerlifting is so important to me. And maybe I could have found another sport that I loved enough to give it up for, but that's just what came into my life. It made me want to treat my body better and to be better to myself. It's also helped me appreciate my body more now for what it can do as opposed to what it looks like. If it wasn't for powerlifting and having to keep my weight in check, I honestly, I don't know where I would be or what I would be doing right now because there were countless nights where I didn't remember when I was with my ex-husband who drove home. I don't say it lightly when I say powerlifting saved my life. And that's why it means so much to me. And that's why I give so much back to the sport because if I can do that for someone else, then it makes it all worth it. It makes everything that I went through worth it. Now, don't get it twisted. Y'all think what y'all see on social media is real. So I post all these selfies and these bicep pictures and blah, blah, blah. It's a picture. It's a moment. It's not what I live with every single day. Can I manage to take one picture good out of 20? Yes, but nine times out of 10, I probably had to take 20 because I hate this about myself and I hate this and I don't like how this looks and this looks fat and it's never ending process, but being aware of it makes me feel a little more comfortable and it lets me know, Barbara, you're probably over exaggerating this. What you think you see isn't real. It's something that I'm always gonna struggle with, but it's a lot better than where I was nine, 10 years ago. Number eight. Volleyball was my first athletic love. So before I got into powerlifting, I played, well, I played volleyball in high school, volleyball and tennis. And then I got pregnant the summer before my senior year in high school. And I didn't play volleyball again until probably 2006. So over five years, as much as I loved it, I just didn't want to get back into it because I knew I wasn't going to be as good as I was and I'm too damn competitive to suck at something. But I decided to get back into it. I played recreational sand volleyball and once I started getting better, I wanted to play more and then I started traveling for doubles tournaments. It wasn't until I started powerlifting that I actually gave up volleyball because my shoulder couldn't handle both. And then I'm glad I did. I mean, do I miss playing ball a little bit, but powerlifting is definitely my passion right now. Number nine, I also play golf. I'm not talking about just going to the driving range and topping a couple balls off the platform. I've actually played in a couple scrambles. Um, I used to actually like my favorite thing to do for Mother's Day was to go out on the golf course because all the husbands had to be home with their wives. And so I got to have the court pretty much to myself. I have my own set of clubs. And at the time my color was pink. So my bag is pink. I had a pink visor with a B on it. I used to wear, you know, my little khaki skirt with my pink shirt and all about my matchy matchy. Y'all know how I do. Number 10, I am terrified of animals. Terrified, terrified. I can tolerate dogs if they are tame and they are not big. And that's about it. Not a fan of cats at all. I just feel like they're too sneaky. Like they are cool and then their mood changes and they'll claw you. I don't know. I just, it's the fear of not knowing what they're gonna do, not knowing what they're thinking. I can't read them. I'm terrified of squirrels. That is my biggest ultimate fear. And I don't know why. I got chased by a squirrel in high school. Turned out it was like one of the teacher's pets and it was by her classroom. And I wanted to walk by and he was just not having it. He, she, I don't know what it was, was not having it. And so I kind of like jumped at it, like, you know, to fake it out and make it move. And it started coming towards me. Now, I guess he thought I had food or something. I don't know. But once it started coming towards me, I didn't look to see what he was coming for. I just turned around and took off running. I got chased on college campus because, well, I don't know if I was chased or not. I never look to see if I'm actually being chased. But if I see it coming towards me in my mind, I'm being chased. So I wish I could say I was embarrassed, but I was too scared to be embarrassed. Like, I, mm -mm. I'm, I don't do animals. I can't. Sorry. Number 11, I am a grandmother. I'm 38. I had my son a month before I turned 18. 
really tough time. I did finish high school. I did go on to college. I have a degree in accounting and I've worked in accounting since I graduated. My son is 20. He had a baby boy last year. That was that was hard. That was a hard pill to swallow because you know you want your kids to be better than you. You want them to do better than you. And according to my son, he was going to do better than me. And along came Kingston. So he just turned one. And I'll insert a picture for y'all to see. Such a cutie. He is walking. Um, I haven't got to spend a lot of time with him. With him being a newborn and his mom being extremely paranoid about him getting sick, being around other kids. And then now everything with the virus. I saw him once last year and that was it. But yeah. I am a grandmother and I like to be called Gigi. Number 12, if you've been watching my channel or seen on my Instagram, this is a fact. Everybody knows I love the color purple. Um, I'm trying to remember when it started because for a while it was pink. I, I don't know when it changed, but it was just something about purple and feeling pretty yet still bold and powerful and if i'm on the platform i wear red always has been that red is power red is passion red is fire like that's what i want all of those things when i'm competing and red's sexy so you know red just red makes a lot of appearances but purple is my first love number 13 i am terrified of heights like want to throw up I don't do rides. I don't do like amusement parks. I don't do that. If I know for sure that there's like no way I'm gonna fall or I don't know, like sometimes going up on really high stuff, I don't wanna look down. If I do, I feel nauseated. But at the same time, like, I'm like, wow, this is kind of cool, but okay, I've had enough. No climbing mountains. Now I have done those things. And I have those memories and that's good enough for me. I don't need any new ones. My favorite food, number 14. Now, I'm sure people don't call this a food, but for as much as I can sit down and eat at one time, it's a food for me. I love boiled crawfish. Louisiana thing, maybe some other Southern states, but I, we claiming it, it is what it is. The worst thing about it is there's so much salt the bloat is unreal afterwards, but it is just so good. I think the, <laughs> the most that I've ever eaten at one time was 12 pounds. Now this is weighed with the shell on and the head and the claws. So it's not 12 pounds of meat in one sitting. But if you can imagine sitting there and peeling them and eating, like I can do that fast. Like you get in a little rhythm, it's nothing. But it's still like hours of sitting down and eating. And a lot of people are just like, I don't have the patience for that. I don't want to do it. I got time. I got all day. And if you want to feed me, I will eat. I've made myself sick. Like literally stomach hurts. I need to go lay down. Might have had seafood poisoning. I don't even know. But I will eat. If, if I have a choice, it's in season and they're a nice size. I could eat crawfish two or three times a week. I'm not going to say every day. I probably could eat it every day, but I wouldn't because it's expensive. But yeah, at least like once a week, no doubt. When it's in season, I'm gonna eat it. Number 15, when I was younger and I talked about what I was gonna be when I grew up, I wanted to be a teacher. My grandmother was a teacher in California. And you know, when you're a kid, you play make-believe games at home. I always played school with my cousin or my sister and I was always the teacher. And my name was Vanessa. So y'all laugh at me about the names for my wigs, but these names come from somewhere. It's not just some random thing I've picked. So maybe when I introduce them again, I'll give you the backstory on how they got their names or where they came from. I wanted to be a math teacher until I got to college and I started tutoring and dealing with high school kids. And then I was just like, I can't. I don't have the patience to deal with other people's kids who think they don't have to listen to you. So no teaching, but at the same time, I feel like I'm teaching in my powerlifting. So it still goes in line with what I saw for myself 
It's just a different subject. Number 16, favorite vacation. Number one pick is always the beach. What's crazy? Your girl can't swim. <laughs> Not even gonna lie. I, I'll get in the ocean for a little while just to cool off, but I don't like it because there's stuff in there and I'm scared of everything. So the minute I feel something touch my leg, I'm out. The minute the water starts getting too high, I'm out. The minute it starts having a lot of waves and I start getting swept off my feet, deuces. Number 17, I actually just told y'all this already, I can't swim. Number 18, in terms of my powerlifting, in case y'all didn't know this already, deadlifts are my favorite lifts. Deadlifting is life. It's the party. It's fun. It's just so raw and primal for me. Like just, you don't have to think, just lock everything and explode. That's how I feel about dead. So anytime you ask me if we want to have a lifting party, you know, we pull in. Number 19, some people may know this about me, but I'm, I'm, I'm old fashioned. I'm a bit traditional in a lot of things. So it kind of, it's kind of a conflict for my forward thinking mentality as far as, you know, being a woman and what we should be allowed to do and, you know, some of the limitations that people try to put on us as women, you know, as far as my lifting goes and, oh, your muscles, you're not supposed to have muscles. Women aren't supposed to look like that. So I know the sport that I love is something that is extreme. It's not traditional. But at the same time, if I'm going out, say I'm going out with my friends and we're going to go out and party, I'll wear, you know, spaghetti straps or strapless or whatever. But if we're going to eat dinner before that, I will put on a jacket. I, I guess it came from my grandmother, but like if you're going out to eat, cover yourself up. It's not disrespectful. I don't know. It's just, it's not... It's not being courteous of the people who are around you. I don't want to come out to dinner to see your panties and your nipples. Like that's not what I want while I'm eating. Now, if we're in the club, that's fine. But I've just always been a bit more traditional in my clothing, more reserved. But then at the same time, I'm a little bit of an extremist with other things too. So I guess it's kind of a cool blend. I'm somewhat traditional in relationships. You know, yes, I am a dominant woman, but I enjoy dating someone who feels comfortable making decisions and feels confident enough in themselves to be able to let me be myself. I'm not trying to disrespect you. I'm not trying to make you be somebody who you're not but at the same time don't try to change me like i'm not out here wilding i'm not disrespecting our relationship so as long as i can keep those things in check i might get a little loud my mouth might be a little reckless sometimes but other than that can you please handle shit? like that's what i want you handle stuff and i'm gonna be the woman but at the same time, I have an opinion and a personality and they're both pretty big. Number 20, I love Marvel Comics. Love the Hulk, all time favorite. <laughs> and I think I just love because it's like one side of him is quiet and reserved and smart and articulate and just kind of like nobody notices me. But when shit pops off, it pops off. And I'm like, you know, I think that's kind of me. I That's my alter ego. Number 21. In one of my, one of my favorite pastimes is listening to audiobooks. I do not have the time to just lay in bed and read a book. I used to, and I loved it. Like, I have a very vivid imagination. So it is so easy for me to get lost and see myself in the book with the characters and what's going on. So now, because I don't have the time to actually sit down and read, I still like to listen to them. There's been times where I was like, y'all, I just saw this movie the other day and then I remembered that it was a book. That's how much I get into them and I can visualize it. Number 22, I love dancing. I don't, I don't have any kind of formal training for dancing or anything like that. It's all very just kind of 
feel the music, feel the vibe, let your body move. When I was younger, my mom taught me how to swing out. Now this is not swing dancing, it's not the same thing. It is something that I don't know if it's done anywhere else other than the South, but it's a style of dance that you do with your partner. It's very easy, but it's just you put your own spin to it, you put your own motion into it, and that makes it look different for a lot of people. But it's the same steps over and over again. But in general, like that was one of the things I didn't realize I, I loved as much as I do until it was taken away from me with my knee being messed up. I mean, yeah, you can kind of bop around on one leg, but it was not the same as really being able to get lost in a song that you love. So that is one thing that I've been happy about since my knee's getting better and I can tolerate a lot more with it is being able to start dancing again. So I guess clubs aren't going to open up anytime soon, but you know, sometimes, yeah, there are nights where I just want to get completely lost and I want to get dolled up and I want to go <laughs> listen to some ratchet ass music in the club and just have fun, you know, let loose. I don't know. Dancing is just something that I feel like it helps take my mind off of everything else. And your girl can keep a beat. I got a little rhythm with me. So yeah, I blame that on my mom because she used to make me dance with her when she didn't have anybody to dance with. So that was always kind of our thing. Number 23. I'm sure y'all know this already if you've been following my channel for a little while. But my favorite thing about makeup is eyeshadow. Could I just only have eyeshadow and nothing else? Absolutely not. That looks absolutely crazy when you just do glam eyeshadow with no face makeup. With my recent haul, and I think I said this earlier, I probably have about 80 eyeshadow palettes. It's my favorite thing. If a new palette comes out and it has a lot of colors that I like, I'm gonna get it. I don't grab everything that comes out. I really don't, despite what my collection may look like. There are times where I've said I'm not going to buy anymore and then something comes out that I'm just like, oh, I have to have it. So yeah, I love my eyeshadows. Number 24, my favorite shoe brand. And I'm putting this out there because you might have seen it in my stories on Instagram. But I just recently got into sneakers and it was because of my knee. I had some before then, but it wasn't as big of a collection as I do now. I'm blaming this Jordan kick on Jessica Pippen because even my son was like, mom, I graduated from high school and I left and I come back and now you're into basketball shoes since when? I'm blaming it on Jessica. And it's sad because I'm trying to think of how many matching pairs we have. If I'm not mistaken, it's either four or five. My all time favorite are the Jordan ones. Um, I don't like the low tops. I like the mid and the high. And then number 25, my Instagram is Miss Barbell Barbie. My YouTube is Barbara Miss Barbell Barbie Lee. My athlete page on Facebook is the same Miss Barbell Barbie. Y'all, I don't like that name. <laughs> it's not that I don't think it's a cool name. Like, I think it's great, but being shy and not wanting a lot of attention on myself, when someone asks me what my handle is, I'm like, Miss Barbell Barbie. And I kind of turn away because I feel like having that name, I'm telling people that I think I'm a Barbie and I don't at all. Body dysmorphia, I don't. When I first started working out at Anytime Fitness on Moss Street, my old Louisiana crew, one of the trainers there started calling me that. And it was because I used to always have to match. This is nothing new. Everything had to match from my headband, to my shirt, to my shoes, to my tie, everything. And so it was always, oh, here she comes in her little outfit. And because my name is Barbara, they would shorten it to Barbie. And then I started weightlifting, so Barbell Barbie. That is it for this video, guys. I hope it wasn't too long. That's 25 facts about me. Comment down below and let me know how many of those things that you knew already. Or let me know what surprised you the most. I would be curious to read your answers. 
Thanks for sticking with me through the end of this video, and I hope you guys enjoyed getting to know a little bit more about me. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye.